Okay, welcome everybody on mobile privacy, Tor on the iPhone and other unusual devices. First thing first, who am I? My name is Marco Bonetti. Uh, I'm working as a security consultant for Cataway. And I'm also a Tor user and researcher at uh, the Slackware Linux Project Italy. Here are my, uh, my handle, uh, my website, my Twitter account, my soup account, which is very popular here, I think. And so, uh, which is the outline of uh, this talk? Uh, we give, I give a brief overview of mobile phone insecurity, security or the lack uh, security. And we start, then we start talking how Tor runs and how you can install it on uh, mobile phones and other devices. Uh, okay. So, uh, this, is, this is just state of the art, it's not in depth. Because, uh, you know, uh, at this conference there are many, many good talks about uh, in depth security for uh, cellular for networks and stuff like that. Uh, what we have seen in, in the past years is that there, there have been a grow, a continuous grow of uh, mobile phone, both in computational power, uh, we have had access to high-speed data network, and mobile phones now are supporting a real operating system. I mean, something which, which is similar to, to an operating system which is running on, on your computer. Um, another thing is that phones are personal. Uh, I always write this line, so raise hand if in this room there's someone which is not owning a mobile phone so far. I just found one person who was uh, saying that he didn't know any mobile phone. Because, you know, mobile phones are, are, are every day are with us. Uh, we take them everywhere we go and we never leave out without them. As you know, phones are a critical piece of hardware because they contain lots of useful information. Code logs, such as proof, yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Uh, unfortunately, there's even too much trust involved uh, in the usage of mobile phones because, you know, we have a lot of sensitive information on there and we as a user, we, we trust our phone and our phone trusts the operator they are currently uh, attached to uh, because it's the operator which uh, makes possible to, to, to start and, uh, or receive any, any phone call. And operators have to trust themselves uh, to route uh, calls around the globe. And well, uh, if we follow this chain, it means that users have to trust operator as well. And why there's so much trust? Because this is the typical user when something is going wrong with, with their phone. So another other problems which have to be addressed when talking about uh, phone security or mobile phone insecurity is that there's too much heterogeneity. Um, I like heterogeneity because different things will, uh, will sprint the growth of, uh, of technology and, and, and uh, uh, not focusing on, on a single vendor or something like that will really uh, rise the competition. But, you know, uh, we have closed communication protocol, we have different type of networks, uh, tons of different hardware models, so, and, and many more different operating systems, so things are really getting out of hand. Uh, another, another issues you can encounter when thinking about security and mobile phone are architectural issues. You know, uh, this is a screenshot of me trying to log in on Gmail, and as you can see uh, here, the, the screenshot has have been taken while the password field has the focus and the keyboard for input the, the password is only presenting me uh, alphabetical characters. No numbers, no symbol, nothing, just characters. If I have to write a complex password, I have to keep pressing different keys in order to show up different keyboards and, and so on. Uh, another example, uh, well, I have to say that in this case, things are getting better. Um, 
this one was an old uh, software version of my phone. And, you know, I was visiting a website with a self-signed cert, and I have no way to, to distinguish the, the certificate which was presented to me. Uh, I have only the choice to accept the certificate without knowing which certificate I was accepting or just cancel the, uh, the navigation. Another problem which we have to keep in mind and we have to address is who really owns the device. You know, you think to be, you are the end user, so you say, okay, I bought the device, I'm owning it. Well, it's not that true because it's, it's like a food chain. Uh, on the top of it, there's the manufacturer or, or the vendor, and I, I'm reporting here some title from articles which shows up in, in the past. Uh, you know, there, there was some time ago, in 2010, I think it was, uh, French government, I can't recall, really, uh, which say a polyphone banner for ministers. Uh, then there's the carrier operator, you know, in 2009, in the Middle East there was a uh, dangerous uh, uh, software update delivered uh, to BlackBerry user. Uh, a talk for Black Hat DC 2010, which, which was calling for privacy, uh, the guy over there uh, presented a really cool application which um, was able to, to, to dig through your phone and uh, harvest uh, many, many, many data. And in the end, we are here. Um, if we take a look instead uh, at, at the data, uh, how is, is it handled? Well, the, the scenario is uh, it, it's not really happy set because most of the time, data on your phone or on your devices is storing clear text. Um, BlackBerry and Nokia uh, allow some sort of encryption, but the problem is that most of the time, um, you as the user have the power to, to give all or nothing that access to an application or to a service. Uh, sometimes you really want to do, uh, what you really want to do is have some fine tuning. Uh, communication in security, this is the hot field right now. Uh, GSM has been broken. Uh, there was a talk uh, a couple of years ago about messing with GSM. Uh, tomorrow is plenty of talk on this topic, which are really cool. Uh, you know, YAMTS is not very really well. Uh, SMS, last year there was a couple of wonderful talks here at DeepSec uh, talking about how you can mess up with uh, SMS. Um, Another degree of research has been done for MMS. Uh, you know, there's Colin Moliner, which is doing a really great stuff in, uh, in this field. And, well, this is, uh, this is just, uh, you know, well-known well stuff, you know. Uh, Bluetooth is dangerous. Uh, you know, there was that affair with Paris Hilton and his phone snooped with, uh, with Bluetooth. Uh, we, everybody knows that Wi-Fi could uh, land a really nice attack. Uh, Near field communication, I think that it's, it was or it's going to be researched here in Vienna, if I'm not wrong. And again, you know, uh, operator injection of HTTP address to disguise your identity. And really cool stuff. So, this is just to recap what I was blubbering <coughs> right now. Um, mobile phones are everywhere. Uh, mobile phones <coughs> were designed to do. Uh, calls, phone calls, and sending text messages. They were not designed to, uh, to be used to access uh, all modern networks. And uh, data stored on these devices cannot be easily protected, and communication needs to be secure. Uh, I'm not going to address all of these issues. I'm just going to address a little bit part of the last issues. Uh, and to address that, we will talk about Tor. Toro mobile phones and other strange and unusual devices. So, uh, I'm assuming that everybody here know what Tor is and how it works. If anyone here have any doubts, it doesn't know what this picture is. Okay, I see an end. Anybody? Okay, just for the guy over there. Um, this is a crash course on Tor. Uh, you know, there's Alicia, 
Alice, which is going to contact Bob and, uh, you know, in a usual communication, uh, you will see a red dotted line between Alice and Bob. But Alice is using Tor, so Alice asks Dave uh, the IP address of the computer you see here with green crosses. These are Tor routers, uh, nodes of the Tor network. And then Alice builds a free hop chain uh, from herself to Bob, and then he can easily contact Bob without disclosing uh, her own origin. It's exit the, the node on the on the right, which is contacting Bob. Okay, it, it was really quick and not not really uh, specific. Just to have an idea. Uh, okay, this is the history of Tor, strange and unusual devices. Uh, the first uh, strange port of Tor was, has been built in December 2007, and it was on the iPhone. Um, two years later, uh, on the Chambi One, uh, this year we got an explosion of Tor on strange devices, iPhone again, uh, Nokia and Android. Uh, more on this double port later. So, when you are going to, uh, to port, not Tor in, in the specific case, but a program to, to, to another platform, well, you, you have some problem to address. Um, the first problem is available hardware. I mean, uh, in the past there were people which were trying to install Tor on, uh, you know, home router and stuff like that, uh, failing because Tor is a bit memory hungry. And, uh, you know, sometimes routers have only four megabytes of RAM or something like that. Uh, just for the fun of it, I tried to load Tor on such a router. And, well, it kept rebooting because uh, it was, uh, the program was eating all the RAM. Uh, then you have to take a look at the hosting operating system. And maybe you have to rewrite parts of the program to uh, to blend, the pro to, to have the program running into the operating system. Then there are, uh, you know, user issues to address, like how you can install a program on such devices and uh, if you are going to provide a user interface to control that, um, uh, the program on that device. Uh, the first strange part I'm going to talk about is Tor on the Chambi one. Uh, anyone, in, anyone here does not know what a Chambi one is? Okay, someone over there, there. Okay, it's an alarm clock. I'm not joking. Okay, here it is. It's a great alarm clock. <laughs> uh, it's supporting a Linux, uh, Linux operating system inside that alarm clock, uh, running on higher RAM CPU and uh, 64 megabytes of RAM. Uh, this port was, um, was built by Bunny of Bunny Studios, uh, bunnystudios.com and Jacob Applebaum. And, um, you know, this, this, is, this is really interesting as a port because they had to address the, the problem I was talking, the, the main problem I was talking before, which is they, uh, they really have a small amount of RAM to work with. Uh, 64 mega more, literally more than four megabytes, but they are just the bare minimum requirement for Tor. So, uh, this is the hard way to install Tor on such device. Um, you have to compile or install the cross tool chain to build program for your alarm clock. You have to check out the sources of the port. You have to run make in that uh, source tree. Then you have a zip uh, with your build. You just unzip that build on a USB key. You reboot the alarm clock with the USB key inserted and you are running Tor. Obviously, there's also the easy way, which is just, you just unzip a build provided by that site or a friend and you're done. Uh, why this port was interesting? Well, because it was an alarm clock, obviously, but also because they addressed some uh, architectural problems. Uh, first thing, they, uh, the installer is uh, creating a swap file for, uh, for, your, for the operating system which is running on the device. Uh, then, uh, they choose to, to configure the, the running Tor node 
as a bridge listening on the HTTPS port. Uh, doing this, they have uh, they, they solve two issues. The first one is that uh, this way the, the node, the program running on uh, on the clock, is uh, um, is consuming less resources than uh, running a full Tor uh, node. And well, uh, they use port HTTPS port to uh, allow um, an easier usage of uh, for for clients in. Um, in difficult countries where traffic is uh, strictly filtered. Um, unfortunately, uh, there's no uh, online upgrade mechanism or easy upgrade mechanism. I mean, uh, sometimes <coughs> happens that you have to upgrade your version of Tor because it, it becomes obsolete or is dangerous or whatever. And the directory authorities, which are the node, if you are not familiar with Tor, are the node which uh, regulates the the network and uh, they describe which version are allowed to run and which version are not allowed to run, uh, maybe they are going to cut you off. So you have to upgrade your, uh, your program. And right now there's no easy uh, solution unless you have uh, a freshly build and you plug the USB and reboot your clock. Uh, another interesting point is that uh, some months later of uh, when they present this uh, this port, Bunny of Bunny Studios, uh, brought another post which, which said that inside the, the operating system of the alarm clock, there's an official support for free G dongles, which are, it, it's cool, it's cool. So to recap, here are the achievements uh, for this uh, port. Uh, the, they, they achieve to run to our limited resources, and they provide an easy install method. Um, the second port, uh, is Tor Mimo and the Nokia N900. Um, this was easy. <laughs> uh, I mean, the Nokia has a, a powerful ARM CPU, uh, lots of RAM, and well, it was easy because Tor was already in the Mimo community. Uh, so the program itself was not hard to, to distribute. What they did is write this simple uh, graphical user interface. And well, uh, install this, this program is even easier because you just open up your phone, you enable the extra de level repository. Uh, okay, uh, there, there will be a pop-up saying, okay, it's dangerous, uh, be aware. Okay, you just look for Tor inside your package manager and, and you're done. Uh, this is how you run Tor on, on your Nokia phone. You just pull, up the, pull out the, uh, the menu and push the, the Onion Router logo and you can enable and disable it on, the, on this screen. You can enable and disable it. Okay. Uh, this port is not interesting in itself because as I said before, Tor was already available, but they, they did some improvement. I mean, uh, it's the first mechanism I, I'm aware of, of an easy, really easy install method of Tor on, on this uh, devices, uh, and it's easily upgradable too because if it's, uh, the Nokia is running a package management system like you know uh, Yum and PT and, and so on. And well, uh, this is also the first graphical controller application for handheld devices that I, I'm aware of. Uh, next port is Orbot, Tor on Android. Uh, so far, this is the best port you can ever have. Uh, of Tor on mobile devices. Uh, okay, everybody knows what Android is, I think. Just to recap, uh, Linux-based operating system, many, many different hardware models and so forth. And Orbot has been built by the Guardian project. Um, guys over there are providing lots uh, of interesting stuff, not only Tor, but also um, uh, secure browser browsers and uh, mm, uh, messaging systems and uh, lots of good stuff. Uh, how, you, how you can install Tor on Android? Well, you have just to scan that QR code. Uh, I haven't checked it out, but I think that uh, you, you, uh, if you try it right now, you can. It will uh, point you to, to the latest uh, uh, to the latest version of Orbot for for Android. Um, 
they are not yet in the Android market. I don't know why, but uh, not yet. They are working on it. It's in the market. Oh, okay, it's in the market. Wow, wonderful. I have to upgrade my slides. <laughs> Thanks. Um, how could you run Tor? Well, this is uh, a snapshot of, of the controlling application. Uh, you just toggle it, like uh, on the wrong yeah. Uh, as you can see, uh, this application or bot uh, let you do uh, more, more interesting stuff. You can you can configure the, the behavior of your uh, of your application uh, with the Nokia. You can't. It was just an on-off switch. And uh, uh, as a side note, uh, note uh, you, um, if you rooted your Android device, you can run Tor as a transparent proxy, so you, you don't have to, to bother with uh, applying proxy setting to all of your application, which is really cool. Uh, so here are the human, easy application, highly configurable and transparent proxy only for the devices. At the end, we are here on mobile Tor, which is Tor for iDevices. Uh, so what are iDevices? You are pretty confident with, with them, I hope. They are uh, devices which are running on Darwin or, well, that version of Darwin called iOS. They are running on powerful ARM CPU and they got a lot of RAM to use from 128 megabyte to half a gig. Uh, okay, you can recall maybe this, uh, this slide. Uh, there was a port for Tor on iPhone in 2007 and that's my port in 2010. Why? Well, because the original port was, be, was made by this handle, SciJacker Wang. Wang. Uh, it was built for iOS 1.1.1, and it was really difficult to have it running. Uh, there were a lot of patches to, to be applied to overcome firmware limitation, like, uh, you know, the, the firmware wasn't allowing more than a fixed number of connections, otherwise uh, the phone will, uh, will crash. And uh, he or she shipped uh, the, the, the Tor port with a copy of Privacy, and also shipped uh, the programs with a copy of iTor.app, which was a graphical controller application. Unfortunately, CJacker1 literally disappeared from the mailing list and from the web. Uh, iTor.app disappeared with its author, and the only thing that remained were the, tor the patches he applied to the uh, to the Tor source tree because they were, uh, they were merged into the official tree. So when I, I bought my first iPhone, uh, I decided to bring back uh, this project. Uh, I installed the open source, open source tool chain. Uh, at the time, at the beginning of this year, I was targeting iOS 3.1.2 and I was cross-compiling from Slackware. Um, my port is built following uh, J. Freeman convention. Uh, if you don't know what, who uh, J. Freeman is, he is Sarek, the guy behind the CDN, the app store for J. Broken Phone. Uh, I'm following these conventions. Uh, my sources for this port are an overlay for Telesforio Tangelo. <coughs> Telesforio Tangelo is, is just the name of the uh, so a Unix software distribution which is the core of, of Cydia. And you can find more information on that address. Uh, it, it's really easy if you want to build Tor yourself because you just have to install the, uh, the tool chain, the open source tool chain. You just check out uh, Sauric sources and, and you just unpack my sources on top of it. So it's completely uh, melted together. It's, it's so the new port was, well, okay, was made by me. Uh, as I said before, it was built for iOS 3.1.2. Uh, latest version were, were targeting 3.2.2 because I was targeting also the iPad, but uh, it really, I'm not using any um, graphical user interface component, so uh, this doesn't really matter. Uh, what I did, it was getting rid of the old patches because they were no longer needed. Uh, I'm shipping with a copy of PolyPoints instead of Privacy. It's just a, uh, uh, a matter of, of choice. It's, it's not really a problem if you want Privacy around Privacy. There's only a problem 
with it. And I'm shipping also an SB setting plugin. Uh, if you don't know what SB setting is, uh, it's, you know, it's um, this stuff. Oops. Wrong. Okay, this, this one is SB setting. If you jailbroke your phone, you can have uh, this kind of console which, where you can turn on and off uh, uh, program and, and utilities. Uh, how could you run Tor on such devices? Well, you can, you have just to add my repository on the website there are the instructions which are pretty simple. You, you just have to, to copy a dev, a dev file. Uh, CD use the same package format as Debian and Ubuntu uh, in, a, in a folder and you have to reboot your phone and then you have my repository added to, to your device. Uh, you just look for the program called Tor Toggle and once you have added it uh, to SP setting, just push this icon and it will be turned on and off or off. So, uh, does it work? Yes, it does. Uh, it works as a client, it works as a relay. You can build hidden services with it. Because I really didn't have to do anything that just cross compiling it because I, I'm, I'm using the, the original. Uh, sources for, for Tor. Uh, the interesting part is that it's running both your wireless and cellular data network. And other interesting part is that iOS should do the transparent proxy. I said should do because, you know, um, if you are familiar with iOS, uh, you have to go to the wireless tab settings. Uh, yep. Uh, to look for the acid you are currently attached to, and you can set a proxy for the test um, You set a proxy only in one place, and you hope that all the application will use it. Uh, it's not always true. Uh, I think that mail app, as the, the the mail reader, has uh, some problem with it. But uh, mobile Safari uses it, and that's a snapshot. I was on check .org, which is a simple test pages, page for checking if you are using or not at all. Uh, there are limitations, okay? Uh, iOS does not support SOX proxy. Uh, Tor is a SOX proxy. Uh, there's, a, there's a workaround. We run Polypo, which is an HTTP proxy in front of it. So we can, have, uh, we can use uh, the node. Uh, there are no HTTP proxy if you are running on cellular data networks. Uh, you, you can set that. You can set an HTTP proxy in such cases. Uh, there are some tricks or some workaround, like if you enable a VPN, like uh, even an insecure one, like uh, the one, uh, not TPC, uh, what, uh, PPTP, even an insecure VPN uh, will allow you to set a proxy then. And there's no, uh, what on the mailing list of the Tor project is called Tor Secure Browser, mean, meaning a browser which will not leak uh, your personal information or your browsing session data. Uh, if you were here last, uh, last year, uh, I gave a talk about how to uh, broke, uh, try, uh, trying to broker or denominate Tor user using HTML5 features. Uh, there aren't only a limitation on the iOS side, there are even limitations for Tor, unfortunately. Uh, the program is cryptographically intense. It's, it's all SSL, which is running uh, here. So uh, the battery, the battery drain is uh, a bit heavy. And cellular data networks are a really Tor friend because you, know, you get rapidly changing IP address, uh, at least in Italy you have spot coverage. It's, it's not a good situation to, uh, to easy run a node. Um, future ideas for the port. Uh, well, right now, uh, I reduced the use of the command line interface at a minimum. I mean, uh, you can install the program without using the command line. But if you are going to use um, configuration, which is not the standard for browsing, but you want to do something more, you have to use a command line. Uh, there's the need for a graphical controller application, and 
something like Vidalia or something like our bot, which you can use to configure your program. Uh, I really uh, can't program in Objective-C. It's too difficult for me, and uh, so I'm stuck. And well, this is something which I'm not even addressing. There's still a need for a secure browser because Mobile Safari is not enough if you want to be if you want to use Tor in a secure way. There are even some other ideas. I mean, uh, IRM, which is uh, the anonymity relay monitor, it's a cool Python program to monitor <coughs> the, the status of your node. It's working. Uh, you have to install a terminal or access uh, your device uh, uh, through SSH, but it's working and it doesn't actually. Uh, Onion Cat, it's, a really, it's something which it's worth a look. Uh, I haven't started working on it, but it, it's something that could be, uh, could be used. And I did some work on TTDNSD, which is a wrapper for DNS queries, but mm, it's not working very well because uh, the operating system, the, the, the program is using uh, library per loading and uh, the operating system, it's, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not kind enough to to let me do the, the work with, without harassing me. And I don't know if there probably are more ideas we could, we could work on. If you have any idea, feel free to share. Or if you have any questions, any, okay, raise hand over there. Okay, ask. No, you weren't raising your hand. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Actually, no one has a question. I might ask for the same developments with iPhone specifically. Um, how would it, would it look the same when it work on an iPad? Like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, iPad, iPod, Apple TV, uh, they are all running iOS, so you can run Tor on all of these devices. Okay, the, the, uh, the title of the presentation was uh, Tor on the iPhone, but really I had to uh, to change it to okay to tour for i devices in this part because you know uh, when I start working on it there was only iPhone and iPod and then they, they came out iPad and Apple TV and they are all sharing the same uh, operating system so you can run the program on all of them with with no problem. Yeah, I just um, wanted to ask, since um, your Tor client works only on jailbroken iPhones, if there are any plans um, like to cooperate with Apple to get it in the official App Store so it works on yeah. devices without a jailbreak? Uh, okay. Uh, the first, this is, was the first, okay. Uh, I didn't say that, maybe not clearly. Uh, you have to jailbreak your device to, to run Tor on it, uh, in, in case of my port. Um, uh, the first, this, is, this was also the first question I, I received when I presented the port to the Tor developer community. And uh, um, the problem was back at, okay, there were two problems. I'm not owning a uh, Nintel Mac, okay? Uh, all, all of my development is, uh, is through Linux, okay? Which is not a supported operating system for the App Store. If you want to sub submit anything to the App Store, you have to submit. To, to, to download the, the, uh, the SD key, which is only for Intel Mac, and well, you have also to pay the license, blah, 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 blah. Um, so uh, it was easier for me, because uh, I'm not owning an Intel Mac, I'm only uh, owning uh, Linux machines, so developing within the open toolchain was a forced uh, solution. Uh, the second part, uh, the second problem was that back at the time, in February, uh, there were many, many, many limitations on uh, application which could be accepted into the App Store. Uh, such limitation cannot uh, be easily uh, integrated into Tor. One of them is the 
uh, ability to throttle the bandwidth uh, used by your application while you are not on Wi-Fi. Uh, this is, this is a, a great problem because um, if you throttle the bandwidth, the bandwidth of your node, uh, you, you are more easy traceable. So it defeats the purpose of, of running Tor on such devices in, uh, using something from the App Store. Not to mention that uh, right now, Tor is working uh, as a daemon. It's, uh, installing Tor on your devices is like the same thing uh, of installing Tor on a Unix machine. It's a system daemon. You, you start and you stop it, but it's, it's a system daemon. And you can do that in the App Store. Uh, it, could, it could be done. It could be done. But it involves uh, an amazing amount of work. You have to, um, the roadmap, the hypothetical roadmap would be that of um, splitting the sources of, uh, of Tor and having something like uh, libtor, okay? Um, not uh, a single program, a single daemon, but a library for doing onion routing. Uh, after you have done so, you can integrate that library into various kind of clients. But it's, it's something that Tor developers are not addressing and are not uh, interesting in, interested in doing right now. So it's not easy to add Tor in, in the App Store, not, not at all. Do we have another question? Okay, thanks. <laughs>